Hello everyone, welcome to the National Arts Center's Resident Chef Series. Uh, my name is Michael Goche and I am delighted to have Chef Ryan Hotchkiss with us from Edmonton, Alberta. He is the chef and owner of Boondock Restaurant. Chef, pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Let's start at the start. Uh, you got your first job in a dish pit. <laughs> uh, as did I, yeah. and I first want to know about what that experience was like at the very beginning and what led you to want to do other things afterwards. What did you see and how did you live through that experience to make you get to where you are now? Yeah, I actually didn't want to keep going <laughs> after that. It was, uh, it was pretty rough, like the first, the first day, literally five minutes into my shift, I broke an entire rack of glasses, uh, <laughs> slipped on the floor and <laughs> spilt a pot of oil within the first hour. Well worth and the money we spent like, on you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so after that, I, I kind of said, yeah, I don't know if the kitchen's the place for me. I was living in Whistler, so that's one of the only okay. things you can do at the time is snowboard during the day and get a job in the restaurant at night. So right. I, I had had inspirations and aspirations of probably cooking younger. And then I kind of said, I don't know about that. And then I went into the front of house for about a year, okay. and I said, no, I think I am suited for the back a little more. Oh, really, eh? back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you seem very presentable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so after the dish pit, though, did you go into garde manger, or like what, like, what was I the did, progression yeah. in the actual, you know, through the kitchen hierarchy, if you yeah, like? Yeah, so I went, at first it was a struggle to keep up in the dish pit, and you know, you're kind of like, wow, oh, this, this is busy, it was a busy place, it was, a, it was an Indian restaurant, actually, and it was <sighs> awesome Indian food, and but high volume, yeah, though. lots of volume, and then you kind of get the, the itch, you go, oh yeah, I get it now. It's, it's, it's fast paced and there's a lot to do and you kind of start to take pride in, you know, having a clean dish pit and things like that. And yeah, that's yeah. when things started to click a little bit and then they finally saw that and they said, oh yeah, we'll bring you online for a little bit. Like where did you get your, your chops? Yeah, so I went, so I worked in Whistler for a couple of years and then I came back to Edmonton. Are you an Edmonton so, uh, boy, born and raised? Born and raised, yeah, okay. just outside, yeah. All right, mm -hmm. okay. Effort, yeah. How do you learn best? Do you learn best from somebody showing you how to do stuff? Do you learn best from actually just jumping into the rush and saying, okay, how am I going to get out of this? I really like to research things very like, in depth and, oh, okay. and put a ton of time. So when I, when I did bounce around jobs, I would always... Like, like you buy would, cookbooks? Oh yeah, buy cookbooks. And, but I, I mostly study, like I was going to work uh, at Barbarico, which is an Italian restaurant, and okay. I just studied all of Italy for a while there, all the regions. Oh my God, the pasta. Yeah, we, well, we, were stu we were doing spuntini, which means like snacks or small bites okay. in, in Italian. So we, I kind of just studied all of that throughout all the regions and you know, why are they doing things the way they're doing them and, and, and the differences yeah. just between the north and the south and the central and it changes from city to city, right? So start with that and then, and then work your way up from there. And what was it that made you say, okay, I want to I want to buy one. I want to like oh. invest the incredible amounts of time and money and energy into think, having your own place. Yeah, I think I've always just been that type of person. So whenever I do anything, it's always whole hog. What's, what's the what's the the top? Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's a just unfortunately <laughs> bred in me. And, you know, it's, I, just I don't know if it's unfortunate. Yeah, extremely competitive. <laughs> so it was never really a question. It was kind of like huh. I'm going to be a chef of you know of that style what we're like so chef owner and mm. then it was just like that's the that's the pinnacle is owning your own place oh, God. and yeah. then you know yeah. i just loved hosting as a kid like i loved when my parents hosted people and i loved going to people's places and i loved the smells and you know even when the lights were turned a certain way you knew yeah. people were coming over and, and all of that mattered so much to the to growing up it was so exciting to you're making me think of that okay. symbol of just the door always being open yeah. and anybody can walk in 100%. at any time yeah. uh, could you situate where the restaurant is uh in the is it downtown is it yep. like where is it so it's downtown it's on 104th street just north of jasper Ave. Which is and how big is the space? I mean, you have 30, yeah. how many seats are 37 there again? 37 seats. So 37 seats. Yeah, it's 1,600 square feet. So it's a, 1,600. It's a, mm -hmm. That's so pretty good, actually. manageable size, yeah. So we've got an open kitchen with seating around the kitchen. So oh, we're trying, really trying okay. to maximize our space in our seating area. So everybody's watching you work, too. Always, yeah. Keeps us honest. Um, yeah. I want to get back now to your time here in Ottawa this week. Uh, we, part of our mandate is to promote Canadian culture, Canadian cuisine. And one of the ways we do that is by doing public demonstrations. Could you give us an idea of how you approach the project? Yeah, for sure. So I think we're going to make uh, gnocchi, which is, um, but it's a Parisian gnocchi. So we do a, okay. a pâté au choux, okay. which, which gives us a chance to show off our technique and 
we are a very like technique focused restaurant. The Parisian gnocchi gives us a really good vehicle to change what we serve with it throughout the seasons. Yeah, so right now it's mushrooms and then in the spring it'll be peas or young greens and things like that tossed in there. How big will you make your menu at a time? I think there's about 21 dishes on there right now in total. So that's including, you know, well, we don't, we don't really go appetizers, mains, desserts. We have... You do small plates. We actually, right now it's changed in. We, we call it shared plates. We try and avoid the word small just to avoid the perception. Right. Because yeah. what's small is, is not small to other, somebody yeah. else, right? So totally. We, right now it's cool and cold, warm and hot, floured, and then, and then sweets. You know, you have so many ideas, you, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but you know, the, the time you have is limited, the team yep. you have is limited, the exactly. ingredients you have yeah. are limited. Yeah. So do you set yourself like, I don't know, I want 20 at a time, 15 at a time. I guess you kind of let the seasons exactly. help you decide yeah. too. At first it was kind of a bit of a feeling out process of how we're going to design the menu. And, and it, it, before it used to go, yeah, smaller, bigger, larger, almost in size way. And then after that it went, to this that format that I'm talking now, and it'll probably change again. So now it's, uh, you know, it's basically, are we going to focus on what ingredients that we want to focus on and name okay. it after that? We could go, you know, we could go sweet, savory, you know, and then go that route. It just sounds yeah. like you just love the liberty of it all. Absolutely, we can do whatever we want, which is what we like, as long as people are enjoying it. And we have gotten to the point where we know that the the proteins are going to stay as they are, and so we just keep. Our proteins as just the meat on the plate right and then that's it and uh, one or two components like the meat like right now our steak is just the steak and then the black butter sauce uh, or the black garlic sauce underneath and then that's it our vegetable dishes are what change a lot more just because it's the season right yeah. and, and things like you that. just got to follow what's available exactly. what you can afford mm -hmm. yeah and what um, people want to be tasting you yeah know, too. right <laughs> like something may not be out of season but we still have it because it's it it sellers well or whatever right or yeah or you can preserve it properly but you can match those flavors with a flavor that people want to taste now and make it warm and inviting while it's cold outside. This yeah. is like an improvised question. Uh, I'm curious, you just strike me as this kind of person. Are you the kind of guy who, you know, once you get interested in something, you kind of go yeah. right into <laughs> it and you go as far as you can yeah, with it. Absolutely. Where are you now with food? Like, what is the latest thing that's kind of, yeah. you know, lighting the fire that's right now? That's a great question. I know, it's, I know it's pretty cliche to say, but the more you research it the more you realize you don't know yeah. you, you start to go a little bit crazy because you go down these rabbit holes and you're like oh my gosh like there's it's just endless but I think, <laughs> I think <laughs> somebody asked me once like how long do you think it takes to be a chef and I was like well, 15 years like, to get to a point where you actually know what you want to be doing and what you want to be focused on it takes a long time yeah. and as, at first you think oh yeah I've started to got a handle, handle on it it's like no you don't <laughs> we're so lucky in Edmonton to have so many cultures to pick from and people doing just an outstanding food everywhere you look and it's it's unbelievable and uh, the one thing that I've gotten uh, that I really realize is that you really just need to scale your food back as much as you possibly uh -huh. can and it takes guts it takes guts to only have two or three things on the plates but if they're yeah. well executed exactly. and they're delicious exactly well, why would I put anything else exactly and I did read in a, an article about you that you know you don't consider the culinary work to be an art form <laughs> but when you speak about it like that you, you you do tie into how artists speak about their own work yeah exactly I it really yeah. depends on how you perceive art as well yeah right? I don't think of it as, a, as an art form because I don't want to I don't want to put out the the vibe that I'm, and I'm a tweezer chef that's and I, right and I'm being overly fussy there's something elitist that's about that I'm, yeah exactly yeah and I don't, okay, I I, I don't want to be I don't want to put out that perception. If if people want to say, you know what, this is this is artistic, yeah, sure. The, you I want mean, to work I mean, at there's it. There's absolutely elements for it for sure, and it, it it has to be beautiful. And but it's also a disposable, right? Like it, it comes out to a table, people perceive it, and then it's gone. Our main focus is flavor and and being satiating and being. Oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a nice word. Yeah. If someone were talking about you, in the third person, and said, "This guy does this for Canadian cuisine," what would you want them to say? Oh wow. Just taking as many influences as I can and then tying it back. So a good example, and I always use this example, is when, a, when we went to Vietnam, we always had that papaya salad with the, with the peanuts and the, yeah. and the mint and the Thai basil. And it was like, oh, I love that combination of the Thai basil and the papayas. But we can't do that in Canada. We don't have yeah. green papayas. It's impossible. Um, but what do we have that's similar? And it was like, oh, it's super easy. It's apples. Yeah. It's that simple. And it's yeah. like, well, well, let's just use that in the exact same way. 
and then that's and then it became part of our crudo dish, our raw fish dish. Mm. So that dish didn't even start as a fish dish; it started as a combination of, of Thai basil and apples, and so just using well. familiar flavors because you can't. I'm I'm truly of the belief that Canadian cuisine is anything made in Canada, mm. and that's my that's my interpretation of it. Everybody has their own, but because you can't you can't do Italian food outside of Italy, in my opinion. Like you can do. Canadian Italian your take food. On and, and, it. and very very well too yeah. and do it you know extremely well but you would even if a really really good Italian chef French chef came to Canada some stuff would come from Italy or France absolutely yeah. but they would also seek out what's good here and how I could replace that here using these ingredients rather than those ingredients and yeah. it would just be more cohesive and they would understand that what were the, the the culinary experiences that made you say oh my god this is so for me <laughs> and also but is lately making you feel like that too? Because yeah. I mean, obviously, when you're studying so much and trying so many different things, that foie gras you tried, yeah. or that whatever it is you <laughs> tried, close, is is, close, is yeah. back. Is you know, it's it's yeah. it's far back. But uh, I'm just kind of curious to know what the kind of yeah. the, the kind of like the milestone oh, recipes yeah. and the milestone plates you had. Yeah, there's been quite a few. Been. So when we were when I was really young, the first experiences were with, with the big garden. Always growing up, is carrots, uh, carrots and peas. Those were always the first two. Is uh, tasting a carrot and tasting a pea right out of the garden, washing it off oh, in the garden hose, eating fantastic. a carrot, and you're like, well, I remember being six, seven years old, I'm like, this isn't a carrot, this is like sweet and, <laughs> and delicious, and a pea too, you shuck it right off out of your garden and you eat it, and it's like, wow, this is amazing, I want this all year. And then got into a little bit older, always go fishing with my dad. We caught a fish, a same fish, rainbow trout from a lake and a rainbow trout from a, a, from a stream not far away, hmm. and the stream one was brown, like sedimentary river, obviously eating different things, the one from the lake was pink, bright pink, and it's like, when you're 13, you don't, you know, you don't think about that. It's like, wow, how could these same species of fish be that different? And they're not that far from one another. Oh, exactly. And so it was my, my parents, and we have to give a ton of credit to them because they just had got me on that thought process. It matters where your food comes from and what you're eating, what it eats matters and yeah. everything matters and, and everything, like absolutely. And then I got a little bit older and my mom was always like, you should be a chef, you should be a chef. <laughs> so she saw something, so it's good. And I was like, no, I don't. Can't do that. It's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> kept putting it off. Kept putting it off. She moved knew. To yeah. <laughs> moved to Whistler. Didn't like the dish pit, but then I went to a really nice restaurant. I had duck confit, and I was like, oh, I was like, something clicked there. It was like, wow, like crispy and fatty. Oh. I, mean, I hadn't tasted anything like that before. You know, my parents are amazing cooks, but they are never making duck yeah. yeah. confit. But yeah. Uh, and like lately, what has been your like? Let's say in the last couple of years, what has been oh. your favorite plate, either to make or to eat from someone else? It's, it's, I really, really, again, I go back to it, but really take pride in, in, in trying to just tone it back and tone it back and using one ingredient a few different ways. Like our beet dish that we're running here is a okay. good example. So it's roasted and we make a caramel out of the beet juice and we make fried <sighs> beets and we make raw beets and just really enjoying just working that thing. One, one ingredient <laughs> and using it as many times as we can and just really trying to just, just make it as delicious as possible but look like it's natural to the guest. Right. Take something, manipulate it, but make it look like it hasn't been manipulated at all and just treat it the way it wants to be treated. How very artistic of yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I guess, how is that all going? You know, in terms of like marrying the love and the passion <laughs> you have for food with the necessities of running a business. Yeah, it's difficult. Like, sure. do you have help, first of all? I've got an amazing staff, obviously. Oh. I couldn't do it without any of it, absolutely. Yeah. I did the whole thing. I general contracted the whole thing. Not oh, you did? Not recommended, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but just... Because you knew what you wanted out of the exactly. space. It, so it was a brand new build, really difficult build. Uh, it took us nine months to build it out. Wow. You know, which was also added to the stress. It yeah, no Basically kidding. added on another year of being of being open yeah. or being closed yeah. and not being open. Well, just always having to scramble to make up for the money you invested. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now we're in a pretty good routine. Everybody's got their jobs and, you know, somebody who handles payroll and I've got an accountant finally <laughs> and things like that, which yeah. you need. And, and then... And sales fix a lot of problems as do. well. Yeah, they do. The first two years are definitely the most, well, yeah, year and a half was definitely the most difficult, you know, we, there were days when we did four people six yeah. people and it's going to happen oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah. And then, especially but, in but, january but you have to, yeah exactly <laughs> you have to stay the course so you have to as long as you know that you've put in the time you've put in the effort you know what you're going to do is and also why you're doing it exactly you know right. i find yeah. 
Yeah, you know, that's the thing that gets you through that four-person day, yeah. is knowing that you're doing this for the right reasons, yeah. and that today's not an easy day, yeah. but you're, it's still the day you'd, you'd yeah. rather have <laughs> than doing something else for somebody else exactly. that you don't have yeah. a passion for. I'm lucky for. to have my wife as supportive as she is and remind me of that too, knowing that you don't have to change everything. Yeah. Stay the course, like you're, you're doing it well. Oh, yeah, it's, tasty. it's tasty, it's good, it's, people are getting it, people that are coming are loving it. And I know you're in kind of like, a heavy time in life in that you have two young children, you're running a restaurant and doing long hours on it. I do have to ask though, you know, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, do you want another kind of restaurant? Do you want to do, like, like I don't know, what, what, yeah. do you have any of those kinds of ambitions, first of all? And if so, what are they? Um, I do, I don't know yet. And right now I'm kind of giving myself like, yeah, maybe don't worry about it right now. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just so busy and with, especially with the kids and the restaurant and everything's just taken us. It's, and I'm reminding myself to just be happy with what you have right now. And it's going really well. The restaurant's full a lot of the time yeah. and people are happy. Let's not mess with it right now. And let's really just see how far we can take Boondock as well. Why it's Boondock good. for a name? I wanted something that could be, you know, that could change and be a little bit ambiguous, get people yeah. talking. So it definitely is ambiguous. Some people hate it, <laughs> which is fine, but love it or hate it, you talk yeah. about it. And that's what I kind of came back to. So it was, it started as the boonies, like out in the boondocks, yeah. which Edmonton is kind of, right? Like, yeah, a I, little yeah bit. that's I mean, true. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, it's it's a major North. city. Yeah, but everybody, <laughs> and everybody else in Canada, including people from Calgary, really like to pick on us for being kind of out of the way. But, you know, we're okay with that. Like, we mm -hmm. don't mind. You know, people from Edmonton stay in Edmonton, and we like that. You know, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great place. We took that word, which was unfamiliar to anybody, being spelt like that, and then putting the umlaut over the U yeah. to make it boondock rather than bundock. Yeah. And then, so that's what we were trying to do. It's become its own entity, right? So it's going to progress and it's going to grow and it's going to change. So the name should be kind of something that can grow with it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what do you think your next big culinary journey is going to be? Like which, which oh, culture or which ingredients? Japan. Uh, yeah. yeah. Japan. I've always, oh, I always just keep going back to Japan because of the simplicity. Well, so the something about the, I mean, the yeah. first time someone showed me how to make sushi. Yeah. It was just so incredibly quiet. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, then I, I, there was something about the kind of the, the peacefulness of the yeah. kitchen yeah. that I've always thought of ever since. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if that's the case for you, but I, like, what is yeah. it about that cuisine? Like, the focus, the dedication, the, uh, the absolute simplicity of it is just absolutely. The 3,000 kinds of salt. Yeah, yeah, and, but that's, but, but it, it matters so much. Yes, to me. I know. And I love that so much. Like, no, it matters the way that you do one little motion in the restaurant, and, it, and I just love that so much. And uh, this is a focus is so amazing, and how they can just stay just absolutely zeroed in on what they're trying to do is just so impressive. I just want to ask one last question about, um, accommodating guests yeah. how do you handle that well i mean this is to go without saying but we, we make everything in house obviously yeah. which is a, what, where a lot of people run into problems as they go to these places where products are brought in so it's really easy especially if we're given time it's no problem like we can we can we love coming up with other things and yeah yeah it doesn't take too much yeah that's it awesome thanks a lot so i think i really appreciate you being with us this week chef oh thank you um so that's a wrap. Uh, I'm Mike Gauthier, and uh, come back to us for more videos uh, as we continue the Resident Chef series here at One Elgin Restaurant and the National Arts Center. Thanks a lot. Chef, thanks so much, man. Thank you.